Big Fish Dreams by Lori Fisher Peelan. Illustrations by Conzie Powell. The boy is fish crazy. That much is clear. Daydreams of catching a huge fish swim through his brain. How's the homework coming, John? Dad asked. Just taking a break. I'll get back to it. How many days till we leave on our trip? Just three weeks to go. Excited? This summer, I'm catching the biggest fish, John says, grinning. Chia! Come home, the mysterious voice whispers over and over. The silver Chinook swims along the shores of the Pacific, headed for the river that smells like home. Memories of a blue-green pool beneath a giant cedar dance before her. Fourth of July Creek is a thousand miles and countless dangers away. But the whisper doesn't stop. Chia, come home. It's time for your babies to be born. The car ride to the cabin feels like it goes on forever. John sits in the back seat between his sister and brother. Barry elbows him on one side. Luke pokes him on the other. I hate being in the middle, John says. He is always in the middle. Worse still, his bossy big sister and spoiled rotten little brother have each captured the title of fishing champion on the last two fishing trips. This year, it's my turn, John vows silently. The familiar taste of fresh water makes Chia hurry faster and makes her careless. She doesn't remember that harbor seals lurk along the mouth of the river until the huge open jaws lunge at her. She darts left, then right, then dives for safety between tangled pine roots along the shore. For a long time, she hides. A tiny log cabin nestles against the mountain. Across the valley, the mountains rise in jagged peaks. The river shimmers like a silver ribbon below. Finally, John says, bursting from the car. The kids run to meet their grandparents, aunts and uncles, scattering comic books and tackle boxes. Chia swims up the river until it's blocked by a massive wall. She swims back and forth most of the day, frustrated and bewildered. At last, she finds the fish ladder that leads around the dam. Exhausted, she flings herself up the concrete rungs and finally into the lake at the top. Long ago, John's uncles and aunts built this cabin by hand as a place for their families to hunt, fish, and enjoy wildflowers. By the warm glow of an oil-burning lamp, John ties feathers onto a tiny hook, creating a perfect replica of a stone fly. He hopes a fish will eat it for breakfast. Do you think this will fool a trout, Uncle Scott? That's a beauty, John. I think that's one's your lucky fly. Chia fights her way through the confluence where two rivers collide. She tastes the cold, clear water of home and pushes upstream. The roaring rapids are steep like stair steps. Chia leaps out of the water to reach each new pool. She rests briefly in the quiet water beside a boulder, then leaps again. On the last day of the trip, Grandpa's up early, flipping pancakes on the griddle. How many hot cakes, John? I'm not that hungry, Grandpa. I just want to get going. 
when can we start fishing? What's the hurry? You kids have been catching fish all week. I've only caught little ones and today is our last day. He thinks, today is my last chance. Chia swims close to the shore where the current is slower. A shadow sails across the water. Instinctively, she dives. Just as the splash hits above her, the bald eagle misses by only an instant and flaps away, talons empty. Chia waits a long while in the shadows before moving on. John's feet are numb from the icy river. He hasn't had a nibble in hours. Suddenly, Barry yells from a boulder in the river, Hook up! Her fishing line zings as she reels in a huge rainbow trout. She holds it up proudly. Nice one, Bear! But inside, John is scowling. He reaches for his good luck fly and ties it to his line. Along the shore, a mama grizzly teaches her cub to fish. She moves quickly for one so large. A dark blur startles Chia just as a searing pain rips across her side. She flips and flops wildly, wrenching herself free. The bear is fast, but not fast enough. Chia slips past outstretched claws and darts for deep water. Over and over, John flicks his fly against the river. He is patient and settles the fly on the water, just like a real insect dipping down for a drink. So far, Luke has caught the most fish and Barry has caught the biggest. Again, the sinking sun marks the end of this fishing trip. Come on, fish, where are you? He whispers. Chia isn't tempted by the flies dancing over the water. She isn't hungry, but she is very, very tired. She pauses to rest near the surface behind a rock. Suddenly, something hard and sharp strikes behind her dorsal fin. A thin ribbon of blood swirls around her. She thrashes and dives deep, sinking the hook even further into her flesh. Fear courses through her veins like currents in the river. John feels the line give an enormous tug. There is a long, quiet moment. Then the fish leaps out of the river. It is bigger by far than the fish of his dreams. He hears Barry and Luke whoop. He hears his own heart hammering. Chia races first upstream, then downstream, pulling the line taut, then disappearing to the bottom. She pauses to gather strength and leaps out of the water. She struggles over another set of rapids, dragging the line farther down river. Hip deep in the river, arms aching, numb with cold, John follows the fish, Bracing himself against a boulder, he pits his strength against the wild creature, against her fierce will to live. His fishing line is stretched nearly to the breaking point. Come on, fish, give up, he whispers. Chia explodes out of the river, directly in front of the boy's startled face. The setting sun sparkles off her scales, reflecting peach, rose, and silver. She arcs over a fallen tree and back into the water, but the line catches on a branch. It tangles and traps her. The fight is over. John wades to the tree and finally sees his fish close up. She is battered and ragged, but so beautiful. A Chinook salmon. He recognizes it from his fish book. For an instant, their eyes meet. In the shock of that meeting, he feels a quick shudder. He hesitates only a moment, reaches for his pocket knife, 
and cuts her free. It is hours before she starts upstream again, the hook still embedded. Sometime in the dark, she finds 4th of July Creek. At dawn, she comes to the blue-green pool encircled by the roots of an ancient cedar. The pool smells at long last of home. That was the biggest fish I ever saw. I can't believe you let it go, Luke says. Barry smiles at John. At least I got a good picture of it for you. Proof. John smells the, the, sp <laughs> the spaghetti sauce his mom is stirring. Grandma is baking a cake to celebrate their last dinner at the cabin and the new family fishing champ. John walks out on the deck and looks down at the river below. I hope you get home, he whispers. Chia swishes her tail in the sparkling granite gravel, making a nest for her eggs. Her mate has arrived and swims slowly over the nest, releasing milt to fertilize the eggs. Chia and her mate stay beside the nest until they die. Their bodies become food for tiny river insects, which in turn will be food for the baby salmon when they emerge. Two new photos hang on John's wall. One is the picture Barry took, the salmon leaping from the water, sun glinting off her scales. The other is of the three kids, biggest, littlest, and middlest. The ones on either end hold up a trout. The one in the middle is empty-handed, but has an arm around his sister and brother. Fishing partners, now and for always. Chia's babies grow strong in the cold waters of 4th of July Creek. One day, an urgent whisper calls to them, follow me down the icy streams to the wild swift rivers, farther still to the slow wide river, that leads all the way to the great blue Pacific. The silvery fingerlings listen and follow the ancient call. The journey begins anew. Here's a quote from Chief Seattle. Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web he does to himself. All things are bound together. All things connect.